Hello my fellow Nightcrawlers, welcome to a brand new video. As usual, grab your blankets and grab your snacks and get comfortable because today we're going to go into the case of Matthew Shepard and the horrible death that unfortunately fell at his hands. This case is one that I just... Uh, it, it hurts. It really does suck, especially considering how young Matthew was at the time of his death and how much potential he had and how much care in his heart that he had at such a young age. It just... Mm. This case is hard, and I'm going to try to explain it in the easiest, most digestible way possible, but also being upfront and honest with the things that happened. I don't want to sugarcoat anything. I want to explain it to you guys properly, so understand that this is going to get super dark super quick. So just be aware of that before we hop in. Matthew Shepard was born on December 1st of 1976 in Casper, Wyoming. He had a close relationship with a bunch of his family members and was often cited as being very outgoing and friendly and a pleasure to be around by many people. Matthew was a very outgoing kid. He participated in the theater program and even took German and Italian courses while he was in school. While in college though, he decided to become a first year political science major with a minor in language. Unfortunately for Matthew, despite having all of this good energy around him and bringing up a bunch of people that he's involved with, he was dealt a bad hand in a lot of ways. In 1995, while he was in high school, he took a trip to Morocco with a bunch of other people. During that time, he was beaten and raped and left him with depression and anxiety. Matthew's mother claims that this is what kind of sparked him getting into heavy drug usage while he was in college. On the night of October 6th, 1998, Shepard was approached by Aaron McKinney and Russell Henderson at the Fireside Lounge. McKinney and Henderson decided to give Shepard a ride home. During the time in which they were giving Matthew a ride home, they decided to take Matthew to a rural area where they wouldn't be spotted. They proceeded to pistol whip him, beat him, and basically just make a mess of this poor kid. Shepard was tied to a fence and then left to die, essentially. It's been said that Matthew's face was beaten so brutally that it was just covered in blood. The only parts that you could see were the tear stains that dripped down from his face, clearing bits of the blood. The assailant's girlfriends testified that neither McKinney nor Henderson were under the influence of alcohol or drugs at the time of the attack. The pair had said that they had learned of Shepard's address and were only just trying to steal from his home. This was obviously a lie. Once they were done attacking Shepard, they decided to head back into town as if nothing had happened. While they were in town though, they decided to get into another whole other fiasco, and they started beating up on some other kids that happened to be in town. The two kids that they decided to beat up on were okay in the end, thank goodness, just had some head wounds, but these guys just really were bloodthirsty. That's the nicest thing that you can say. They just wanted to cause harm to people. Police eventually showed up and apprehended the two dudes that were deciding to just go on a hitting spree and I guess murdering spree as well, if you'd like to word it like that. Henderson was put in cuffs and arrested and then they decided to search McKenney's truck. In the truck, they found a bloodied gun, Shepard's shoes, and a credit card. The pair then decided to try and convince their girlfriends to give them an alibi that they weren't doing anything bad. Look, I'm just gonna keep it real. If your girlfriend would be willing to give you an alibi like that, that's concerning, genuinely concerning. Shepard was in a coma for 18 hours and still tied to the fence. He was eventually discovered by a cyclist who had actually mistaken Shepard for a scarecrow. The first police officer to arrive on the scene found Shepard alive but covered in blood. Shepard was transported to a hospital nearby but then had to be moved to a more advanced trauma ward. He suffered fractures to the back of his head and in front of his ear. He experienced severe brain stem damage which affected his body's ability to regulate his heart rate, body temperature, and other vital functions. He had a bunch of other lacerations all over him. They basically were out for blood with Matthew. They wanted to go out of their way to ensure that this kid suffered. His injuries were deemed too severe to operate on, and while being on life support, he never awoke. He stayed in that coma. Matthew Shepard was pronounced dead six days after the attack on October 12th of 1998. During the trial, McKenney and Henderson initially tried to play it off as it was just a standard robbery, and they were just trying to take the guy's loot. It became very clear though that this wasn't just a standard robbery. They went out of their way to pretend that they were gay, 
to entice and lure Matthew. One of the detectives testified that McKinney told his girlfriend that one of the main reasons that he attacked Matthew was because of the fact on how he felt about gay people. So it wasn't even more on the fact that he attacked him for his money, he straight up attacked him because he hated gay people. The charges are a little weird, so I'm gonna like read it off just so that way I don't get it wrong and I don't get people yelling at me. But McKenney and Henderson were arrested and initially charged with attempted murder, kidnapping, and aggravated robbery. After Shepard's death, though, the charges were upgraded from attempted murder to first degree murder. And then the girlfriends were uh, then charged as well because they kind of were co conspirators in the entire thing as well. The jury found McKenney not guilty of premeditated murder, but guilty of felony murder and began to deliberate on the death penalty. Shepard's parents, though, brokered a deal that resulted in McKenney receiving two consecutive life terms without the possibility of parole. Henderson and McKenney were incarcerated in the Wyoming State Penitentiary and were later transferred to other prisons because of overcrowding. Of course, with cases like these, you can't have people that are going to just be respectful to what happened to Matt and all the disgusting horrible things that had happened to him. You have people like the Westboro Baptist Church that are gonna come out and say like, Matt is in hell and stuff like that because people are great. Matthew Shepard does live on with a very strong name though. His parents opened up a foundation called the Matthew Shepard Foundation, fighting against hate crimes and stuff like that that are all within the United States. Taking a snippet from their website, the life and death of Matthew Shepard changed the way we talk about and deal with hate in America. Since his death, Matt's legacy has challenged and inspired millions of individuals to erase hate in all its forms. Although Matt's life was short, his story continues to have a great impact on young and old alike. His legacy lives on in thousands of people who actively fight to replace hate with understanding, compassion, and acceptance. It's stuff like this that is very important. Matthew Shepard's name is one that's going to live on. It's not something that people are going to just forget. The foundations that they're being created. There was even a bill that was introduced to Congress in 2007 that featured his name to fight against these types of hate crimes. It's amazing to see, and I'm glad that there are many different bits of foundations or um, bills or anything being mentioned of him because hate in any forms like this need to be addressed. The idea that gay people or something like that are beneath you is something that is so ridiculous and we got to get that mindset out of the American people's heads and frankly just anywhere really like I've never understood it. I've never understood why you just can't let just you can't let people be gay like what's wrong with that? I always try to interpret it like this. If you're so worried about what other men are doing with their penises, that sounds pretty gay. So maybe you should look a little bit inward, if you know what I mean. As usual with cases like these, I've put Matthew's find a grave in the first link in the description. So feel free to go over there and leave a good bit of wording, I guess, for him. Leave a good message for Matthew because what had happened to him is horrible, but his legacy is one that everyone is going to remember for a long time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, why not like and subscribe? It definitely helps me out. If you didn't, why not dislike and let me know what I can improve on for next time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all in the next one. Uh, howdy, future Caden here. Um, I was literally editing the video and I, uh, I could have sworn, I could have sworn that I did this segment, but I didn't because I'm a silly goose. So we're gonna do this now. Um, we're gonna be shouting out the Patreons because that's very, very important to me. And I wanna make sure that you guys are shown the respect that you deserve. Um, Trina, Kaden, Dark Moon 2. If your parents named you Dark Moon 2, that's really middle. Like that's really cool. Um, Christopher, Lilac, Clover, Snake Girl, Rylan, and Lint. Genuinely thank all of you for supporting the page. Um, it really does mean a lot to me and I do want that to be expressed. And I do want this segment to always be a thing. I could have sworn I did it though. I don't know what happened, but whatever, I'm sorry. Anyway, I appreciate all of you. Thank you guys so much. Y'all have a good rest of your day.